Om Shanti. So welcome all of you to the workshop 74 on sweetness. And as always, before we begin the workshop, let's spend a few minutes reflecting on this very unique value which not many people speak about sweetness asking myself am I really sweet nature sweetness not in the physical perspective but having a sweet nature My interactions with others. Does that purity, the innocence of the soul emerge? As I reflect on this, I am sometimes reminded of the bitterness around me. some past experiences which I have had which are not very good when I remember them. So can I just replace those bitter experiences with whoever I had? The intrinsic innate sweetness of the soul which is a unique virtue of the soul. So can I replace that? For today's workshop, let me just explore that how can I inculcate this value more and more in myself and in my interaction with others. So with this, I welcome all the facilitators. We have Sister Anu from the West Coast, Sister Priyal from the Centre Park of India, and all our tireless server interpreters and the recorders. So welcome all of you to a very sweet good wish for the day from the workshop series. And all the lovely participants we have around, we gather quite a few around. So let's start the workshop. And it's been a long journey, I must say, it's almost one episode or one workshop shot of the Platinum Jubilee. Even we don't realize we have covered so many episodes. And thanks to all of you all for your uh, enthusiasm to be a part of the same. And today we cover sweetness. So today is actually not an icebreaker video, I must say, it's an icebreaker experience. And I want you all to just experience the sweet silence. We have a very senior sister of the organization, Sister Shilu, one of the pioneers who started recording. And a lot of television series started with her in India way back in the 1992 and 93. So a very senior experienced Rajyogi. So it's just a three minute video. And let's try to experience what she is wanting us to experience, the sweetness of that soul consciousness state. And then we'll see what sharings you all want to have related to this experience. I'm a point of divine light and might. I'm eternal. And when I say I'm eternal, I feel I have conquered death. And then I go inwards. I become introverted. And I tell myself, I am an entity separate from this body. I am neither this body nor am I any of these physical senses. But these physical senses, which are part of the body, they belong to me, but I am not that. I am different from what belongs to me. And in a second, I can go beyond the pull of the physical body. 
I become aware of my true self. I become detached from the pull of the body. And immediately I feel I'm so peaceful. I don't have to look for peace outside. Peace is my true nature. Peace is my Swadharma. Peace is what I am surrounded by. Peace is my inner quality. I am peace. And I go into that state of peace. And become very light. Totally detached. Then I am peaceful. I am also loving. So love is my nature too. Peace and love go together and where there is peace and love there also is power and that's what I am. So this is the true experience of meditation. It is first step and through this we become more and more enlightened about the self because we don't have to look for all these outside. So wonderful. I'm sure all of you are experiencing that sweetness. So let's begin. We have two, three minutes for your sharings in the chat box. Let's see what you'll have to say. Still very blank. Okay. I want you all to come out of the sweet silence and share something. Right. So, anyone wants to share orally also should be okay if you all want to. Okay. If not, so I think uh, Shilu Didi, I must call her, she's our senior sister. And yes, people have started saying here, please switch to every, okay, mindfulness. Anyway, I'm getting confused here, right? So if someone is saying switch to that mode, yeah, Sister Denise is saying peace and love. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell. That uh, if you want to develop this quality of sweetness, I think from this meditation video, uh, Sister Shilu pointed out these two beautiful values. We have covered a lot in the past on them, peace and love, which is the original nature of the soul. And the more and more we situate in that, sweetness becomes a part of us. And the Balvinder sister is saying, uh, yeah, so it is good. She's just reminding all of you all to message to everyone, though she's messaged it to me actually, so therefore no one else can see. So I would request all of you all to put it everyone. And Sister Raina, Oh, I thank you for sharing that. So it's, I think everyone is disabled. We'll just make it enabled. Uh, maybe it happens sometimes in the settings. We'll just check it out. Good for reminding. I think we can, right? All of us. Just a minute. Mute is okay. Chat, let me check. Uh, just check uh, the chat. I don't think there are any such settings where we disable for everyone. Is it? So there are. There are. Now it's disabled. Uh, so it's it enabled. Okay, fine. Fine. So as it is, we have exceeded our time. If you all have a few sharing sharings in the quick chat box, you can just tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. In some way, Sister Balvinder. Thank you. What else? Any other person? Yes. Okay. Fine. So I think uh, let's not come in the vocal mode. And Sister Anu is saying, know my true self in silence, which is equal to sweet peace. Absolutely. So let's go from experience to another reflection, another experience again in the meditation, another 
reflection. So we'll just keep doing that. And lastly, Jujhar is saying, I'll just take these. Transcendental feeling, bliss, the value of bliss, right? Sweetness can only be experienced by purity and wisdom, Vijay Bhai. And lastly, I'll take this as the last one, Sister Balvin. The real sweetness begins when we need to interact with people in the real world. So something is. Right now, we are feeling sweet, fine, no challenge. But when we go in the real world, yeah, we need to practice them. Thank you so much for your sharing. It's over to you, Sister Anu. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, that was really beautiful. And I'm sure uh, many of you felt that. So deep inner silence and that deep silence or peace um, that actually makes us feel sweet and it comes out mm -hmm. as sweetness. So let's quickly move to our um, first reflection exercise. So that's uh, my understanding of sweet behavior. So um, as we meet many people in our life, our loved ones and many people who cross our path, someone or other, their gestures, their presence, their support that touches our heart deeply, that uplifts, that makes us feel very happy uh, to, uh, they raise us to a higher consciousness, higher feeling. So uh, what is it that touches in such behaviors? That's the sweetness we may define. So let's take a moment to reflect on an instance when someone's sweet behavior towards you touched you immensely. And as you reflect, think what does sweetness mean to you? Because what is that in that, that touched you? The behavior, what else? What is that person did that you felt so good? That is the sweetness from the other person. So what does it mean to you? Let's take a minute. Anu, it's very, uh, yeah, it's low volume is better. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm sure that it was not difficult. <laughs> tap on to someone's um, sweet behavior and what was it? What does sweetness mean to you? So um, we would like you to share. As we share, we inspire, we share that energy, the knowledge, my own feelings, and we each like together we grow. So really encourage all of you to unmute and share. Anyone? So in the chat, um, I think Golden says, if someone gives someone or someone hard easiness or happiness, when you feel easiness or happiness from somebody, that is the sweetness we feel. So that is our, um, our, our definition. Then uh, Rodi says, peace, love, purity. I think it may be um from before i'm not sure kindness love care priel says sweetness means kindness love and care yes bridge balbhai you can speak yeah. yeah may i give you a very uh, instance what happened i am going to the center at park place it is a very small center and in the morning, we are supposed to go at 6.30 to 7 meditation, 7 to 7.30, this uh, murli. 
So in the month of January, just I went there and I saw that it is only 6 o'clock, not 6.30. Then Sapna Didi came, I told her ki, it is 6 o'clock, should I go back? Then I thought, no, let me meditate here, otherwise coming and going will take time. After a few mo moments, she came, comes to me and asked me, uh, would you like to take a cup of tea? So it was so sweet of her, it remained in my memory. So I told her, no, no, I have stopped taking a cup of tea in the morning. It is so sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful um, example, little things that the care, that uh, the thinking, at least for me, that, oh, there's a lot of time. Can I offer you a cup of tea? That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Rich Palva. It stayed with you. It would stay with all of us. Anyone else who would like to share? So, um, uh, Marina's sister, who is recording French translation, says, sweetness is close to love, pure feelings and good wishes to me. When someone has love, pure feelings and good wishes for me. That's Denise's sister says, remembering a very sweet soul, she had such humility and generosity. So humility and generosity is peace and purity and fusion. Is. Um, also, Denise's sister added um, someone who speaks softly. Vijay Pal Bhai says, sweetness comes from sweetness on face, sweetness in speech, and sweetness in action. And that comes from that deeper inner silence purity or knowing the self, um, true sweetness that touches others. Thank you. Lara says in uh, other language, I don't know, Bhavan says sympathy is sweetness. Uh, Balvinder says uh, she always appreciates finding this class, the values class that always has touched her, and ignited deeply each one of you of your team is the best unique example of sweetness in my life. That's each of us, aren't we? So when we are um, exploring on values, um, sweetness comes, that reality, truth is peace, love, purity. So, so um, yeah, there's a longer message, but maybe we can hear from Amarji. Um, unmute and speak, Amarji. Uh, may I, uh, can I speak in Hindi? Okay, sure, yeah. If it's so, good you speak in English, Amarji. I'm not you speak good English. I'm uh, senior. So when I go to the program, 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 I go to the program. कई बार लेट हो जाते हैं तो वहां को भाई बहन हमें घर तक पहुंचा देते हैं तो एक बार ऐसा ही हुआ जब मेरे को एक भाई ने बोला कि उन्होंने एक और बहन को छोड़ना था तो उन्होंने मेरे से बोला कि अगर आप जा सकते हो तो मैंने कहा मैं चली जाऊंगी तो काफी वो ले आए थे मेरे को गाड़ी में जब मैं घर पहुंची तो सबसे पहले मैंने उनको थैंक्स का मैसेज किया तो उन्होंने रिप्लाई में बोला बहन आप बाबा की बहुत प्यारी बेटी हो तो वो मिठास मेरे कानों में अभी तक गूंज रही है सो स्वीट थैंक यू सो मच इट्स इट्स द जेन्युइन जेस्चर थॉट्स ऑफ समबडी एंड शेयरिंग थैंक्स ग्रैटिट्यूड स्वीटनेस थैंक यू थैंक यू अमरजीत सिस्टर एनीवन एल्स आई एम श्योर वी ऑल आर टचड बाय स्वीटनेस इन लाइफ सो you would like to share? So Ravindra says, when we look inward and feel sweetness, that's the true sweetness, and then we share it with others. And uh, Portuguese, uh, Lara, uh, whatever she wrote in Portuguese that uh, Brother Manuel has um, translated, she says, sweetness is purity, sincerity, and truth. And Miwa says, sweetness is purity and happiness. See, what is purity we all have to really reflect on? When we are not genuine, pure, then we ourselves feel that 
conflict within. So then it cannot be a real sweetness. Thank you, everyone. Um, Bhavish, do you want to share? Because you have unmuted, so I thought you may want to share. Maybe not. Anyone else? Yeah. Om Shanti Didi Ji. Can I? Okay, okay. okay, my dear brothers and sisters, please accept my greetings of love, peace and happiness with sweetness today. The sweetness will be automatically experienced by you and by others if you think you are a point of light, as we saw in the meditation by Shilu Didi. If we practice this, that we are a point of soul, point of light, and the others whom we are seeing and looking through the eyes is also a point of light. The moment we do this, automatically sweetness will be reflected through your face, through your eyes, and it will reach the inner heart, inner core of the other person. Because in our daily versions, the God says to us, Mithe, Mithe, Bache, my sweet children. You see, he says every children as a sweet children because he is a light and he sees us a light. So this automatically light makes you sweet and sweetness goes to everybody. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay Bhai. That's true. Um, I think we are really approaching time very fast. Anybody else who is very inspired to share? What is sweetness for you? In the chat, uh, Gulden says, holding one's hand, someone's arm, or putting hands on child's head with love is sweetness. Uh, Beatrice's sister says, before it was sweetness of life, that is a sunset and ice cream, but I learned sweetness inside. Yes, it is in words. That's what she's saying. Again, Balvinder says, says a sister says that, uh, taking personal accountability, heal my inner hurt that I have created myself. So that is, again, knowing myself, I will go to understanding of knowledge or drama of life. Um, and that is sweetness. Pavan says, if others are pleased by my action, work or deeds is also sweetness when somebody is pleased. Kavita says, if I know my true identity, sweetness will naturally flow. So thank you, everyone. I think we can see what is that we have accumulated for me too. When I'm accepted as I am wholeheartedly, love flows, joy flows, that's sweet. Um, Deepak Bhai, you can show whatever we have accumulated. Thank you. Everyone can unmute themselves, please. So um, these are beautiful um, reflection and the values that have come out from our sharings. What is sweetness? Is the peace, love, purity, Hello. kindness, care. And uh, Dr. Mehta, do you want to share anything? Because I saw, yes, please. Yeah. We must, we would love to hear from you. The the uh, experience of working with Brahma Kumaris is sweetness is almost all pervading wherever you are, whoever you meet, and especially as a physician or a doctor that I meet most of the, most of the case sometimes in the hospital or the clinic, and there so much of uh, expression of sweetness in the tongue whatever they say, and the basic thing they always do is uh, bring sweet toli to you. But sweet toli is only symbolic of their sweetness. I think sweetness is a part of their personality. I think it's all pervading. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. That's true. That sweetness from the heart coming in the tolis. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm seeing sweetness is flowing now if in everyone's heart. We are always touched by that sweetness from someone or other in life. Um, so sweetness on face, uh, when we look inward, um, and then when you know yourself and the ignorance that was 
living my life uh, when I understand that and move away, take personal responsibility, sympathy, purity, sincerity, happiness and truth, uh, genuine gesture, gratitude. And uh, yeah, just from physical sweetness like a toli or sweet or sunset ice cream to that inward journey and um, experiencing that. Yes. So yeah, it's beautiful sharings. There are more on the chat. Um, thank you so much. Let's move forward with an experience um, of meditation. So I'll hand it over to Brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks, Dr. Mehta, for reminding us the sweet tuli, the sweet prasad we said, Brahma Kumaris. So it gives me a food for thought. So let's have this sweet tuli in the sense not a physical one. Let's have it inside, the sweetness of the soul. So as always, we move from reflection now into an experience <clears throat> because these workshops are designed so that we keep going back and forth from reflection to experience. And why we are doing that? So that you are getting ready for the action planning stage. That's the last step of the workshop where we try to see how we can inculcate that value the best, how we can do that in our daily life, professionally, and personal life as well. So let's begin with this meditative experience here. And as Shilu Devi hinted on that, let's again sit back and try to visualize the self as this beautiful, conscious energy which all of us are. Withdrawing my senses from the outside world. Let me just go back inside to the inner core, the inner beauty that I am. <laughs> the moment I touch that inner core, experience starts blooming. The peace, the love, the purity within. The natural attributes of the soul. When I touch upon those, I start experiencing the sweetness. This is just one level, the soul consciousness level. Let me take this experience to another level by visualizing the Supreme Being who is the source of all these values. It's an infinite ocean. And the moment my consciousness shifts onto this higher being, I can see myself becoming more and more an embodiment of all these values. And then I don't have to think about being sweet. Being connected to the source of purity, love, and peace, I naturally exude sweetness in my behaviors and interaction with others. Let me prepare for the next action planning exercise. Staying in this consciousness, being connected with the divine. So with this, let's come back into the 
consciousness of the workshop. I'll stop sharing and I pass it on to Sister Priyal for the next activity. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Manoj, for taking us through such a sweet meditative experience. Now let's move on to the action planning exercise. Action planning, as we all know, gives us an opportunity to make the plans for how we can inculcate the value that we have been going through for so many days now, that is sweetness, into our day-to-day -day activity and our lives. So just take a few moments. I'll start sharing my screen. Take a few moments and reflect on the question as to what are the various ways in which I can inculcate sweetness in action at workplace or at home. Take a few moments. You can write your sharings in the chat box or you can raise your hands. Any sharings or what are the ways in which you can inculcate sweetness in your own Hello. life, in your own actions? Yeah, please go ahead, Rehna. Okay, so last time uh, it was about lightness, which is uh, about a state of mind. Okay, and the state of mind depends on your quality of thoughts. So sweetness in interactions, I believe uh, it depends on your purity of intention. Whatever you say and whatever you do, what with what intention are you doing it? I mean, is there purity in that intention? It's based on that. Like uh, the other day, <laughs> We were speaking about artificial sweetness and all this because people can really pretend to be sweet. They can pretend to be kind based on their convenience and requirements. Okay, so God comes and calls us sweet children, even though he knows we are not very sweet. We might be bitter or very spicy or all kind of things, but he calls us sweet children because he is ever sweet. Yeah, and he wants to immerse that sweetness within us. So when our intentions are pure and we want to emerge that sweetness in others, we have to be sweet ourselves inside. And based on that pure intention, we can be sweet and we can emerge sweetness in others, I think. That was very beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. That not just your, your sweetness inside you can actually be transmitted to the other person as well and make the other person as well sweet even though he's not behaving in the sweet way right now in that moment. Beautiful. Anyone else who would want to share? Please unmute or raise your hands. Nobody? Okay, but till the time I'll read the sharing from the chat. Yeah, please go ahead, ma'am. Om Shanti. Can I speak in Hindi? Uh, sir, uh, please have you So, I want to share this with you. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 
Okay, uh, Nancy, please go ahead. You have unmuted yourself. Sure. Well, a hug for an elderly person holding their hand and a sweet smile. And this because the elderly can be very sweet and need sweetness. Yeah, just a touch of sweet hand, hold hand holding and just a smile can be very sweet. Thank you for sharing that. Sarjit, you wanted to share? Please unmute yourself. Sarjit? Okay, we'll read, we'll go through a few um, sharings in the chat box. Dr. Matnani says, by practicing silence for first few hours of the day can help me to remain soul conscious and sweet throughout the day. I hope uh, the background noise is not disturbing. Is there any noise in my background? Hmm. Hello, no, it's so I want to say something about it. When any person says it, it tells him how his personality is, how his heart is. And sometimes to say something about it, it becomes a big work. Because like a manager who wants to explain something, if he wants to explain it very sweet and love, then everyone can understand it in a good way. इसी तरह कोई कोई काम अगर अच्छा हो रहा है अगर हम गुस्से से बोलते हैं तो बिगड़ भी जाता है इसलिए मिठास जिंदगी में बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है वो रिश्तों के लिए भी बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है अगर हम मीठे रहते हैं तो हमारे रिश्ते भी अच्छे बने रहते हैं सभी से अगर हम Okay, so I'll translate what she said. Okay, you have unmuted yourself. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, meetha is very important for life. If we say meetha, then our relationships and relationships are also good. And sometimes we have good work. If we don't say meetha, then our relationships are also good. And sometimes we have good work. 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 गन, बन के रहना चाहिए ताकि हमारे संबंध और जिंदगी अच्छी तरह चले ओम शांति थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग दैट सो आई ट्रांसलेट व्हाट शी शेयर शी द स्वीटनेस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन लाइफ द वे वी अ पर्सन स्पीक्स रिफ्लेक्ट्स व्हाट ही इज थिंकिंग इनसाइड सो आल्सो स्वीटनेस इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू मेंटेन अ पीसफुल एंड हेल्दी रिलेशंस इन द लाइफ सो दैट्स व्हाई वन हैज वन शुड Try to be as sweet as possible. Thank you for sharing that, Sarji. So moving on to the chats now. Uh, Rabindra said, sweetness is our original nature. Vijapal Bhai uh, says, a sweetness with thoughts, best wishes, or shubh bhavna and shubh kamna. Brijpal Manotra says, listen, understand, acceptance, politeness, and love. That is how he will be inculcating uh, sweetness in his life. Dr. Mehta says, being appreciative to the members of the family at home and to the colleagues at work. Brilliant. Okay, Subhash Sinha says, if your intention is pure and helpful, sweetness will come automatically. Vijaypal Bhai again says, sweetness with action to give comfort, care, love, peace, and Kalyankari action, Kalyankari meaning beneficial actions for everybody. Sister Anu says, keeping my ground of no judgment for others internally and accepting them as they are will allow me to be truly and con constantly sweet with everybody. Amarjeet Kaur says, to appreciate someone is also a kind of sweetness. Uh, if somebody can please um, translate what Lara has said. Lara has said, see yourself and others as a soul and not a body. Being merciful makes us light and sweet. Beautiful. Amarjit Kaur says, to appreciate someone is also kindness. Okay. Dr. Gaurav Agrawal says, to begin with, to speak slowly, softly, and with a low tone or volume of conversation. Later, to practice in a soul-conscious state, all the previous ones. Beautiful. 
like first bringing things at a physical level and then bringing it down into your uh, level of consciousness. Balvinder says, working on myself first, how can I make myself sweet like honey by remembering my true identity? Then sharing with others in this form, talking to older people, preparing food for them, taking them for doctor's appointment, tolerating insults from others' as angry behavior. So being patient and tolerant can also make one person sweet. Dinesh said, says, sweetness, sweetness will only come if you are in yourself. And Balvinder again says, uplifting, inspiring, discouraged ones, forgiving others' as mistakes, becoming non-judgmental, non-comparison, non-competitive, always gives, always giving with no expectations in return. So beautiful sharings from all of you. Okay, is there anybody? Okay, uh, BK Prat, Patma and Seelan. Oh, please go ahead. Please unmute yourself and yeah. Um, good morning. You know, I was just reflecting on this whole aspect of sweetness, and I'm just struck by the innocence, the pure joy of innocence uh, of little children and how they attract us. And we all just look at them and say they're so sweet when they behave in such a manner. And I think that all of us are striving to. Uh, to become like this, where we become unbiased, happy, find joy in everything. Uh, and, it, and it just brings that kind of sweetness from within you. And I'm reminded of our uh, leader who's left her body uh, uh, from the Brahma Kumaris, Vidali Prakashmani. And uh, I found Prakashmani. I found it to be so sweet because she found such joy in, in, in little toys, you know, people used to bring little toys and show her and she used to jump and laugh and be so happy. And that's like so innocent, you know, and I feel that innocence is such a tremendous quality as far as sweetness is concerned. And it must be natural, unbiased, just joy, just to find happiness in everything. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Miva, you raised your hand, I think. Would you Should want we... to... Yeah, sorry to interrupt, Priyal Bain. I think Olga, where there are three, uh, I think three BK students sitting. Uh, can anyone share? We can see you if you all wanted to share something. Well, okay, carry on. Okay. Okay, so we have got another sharing in the chat box. So um, it says, it's the virtue that Baba gives us every day that is sweet children. Sweetness introduce peace also. Baba, we uh, can be like the divine soul or the supreme soul. Uh, BK Dennis says, silence, being in love with God or love itself helps to forget all the bitter things and become sweet. Thank you for all the sharings. Uh, I'm having a little noise in my background, so I'm really sorry for that because we're having a festive season going on here in India. So, um, all right. Is there anybody who would want to share? Uh, may please unmute themselves. I think our time is up, sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll, uh, I'll take the last one is in the chat box. It's to smile when seeing or meeting another. And they smile back and give drishti. That is sweetness. So thank you for all the sweet sharings from everybody. And now I hand it over to Dr. Manoj for further. Thank you. That's okay. I don't know whether Deepak, why do you want to share the screen quickly if you have noted down? Yeah, I am. I'm sorry about that. I'm a little yeah, confused fine. because of the background noise. I'm really sorry about that. That's okay. That's fine. So... Okay, in the summary, what we have is um, action planning, what everybody has shared is sweetness is our original nature. So how can we inculcate is by practicing silence for the first few hours of the day, which will help bring in soul consciousness and you can be sweet throughout the day. In speech, when you speak sl less, speak slowly and speak sweetly to give sweetness to everybody. Uh, our sweet nature can be transmitted to the others as well. So sweetness comes only when you are sweet inside yourself. 
listen, understand, accept, be polite and love, and being flexible is also sweetness. Being appreciative to the members of the family at home and the colleagues at work, that's how one can bring in sweetness in our lives. By speaking sweetly to others, seeing ourselves and the others as body, uh, not as body, being merciful and to, again, uh, to give comfort, care, love and peace to others. So these are the sharings. Thank you all for the sharings. Wonderful. So thank you so much. And if I can request uh, the ones who have joined new, and if you want to be a part of the workshops and the episodes in future, kindly share your uh, email addresses and WhatsApp numbers as well. Uh, we send all the review materials after the workshops are done to your email so that you just have this wealth of so much of knowledge, the group wisdom which comes out in these workshops. So kindly, if you are comfortable, share it to everyone in the chat box or you could do it to Sister Anu or Sister Vidhi. So just share your numbers there. Okay, so now let's take the flight of the mind from India, the ones who are in India, and from the west coast of Canada. Let's come to the center of the world, South Africa and UK, the same time zone, where we see what our speakers had to say about sweetness. Very sweet, sweet Rajyogis, I must say. A lot of experience of Rajyoga meditation and equally, uh, I must say, very, uh, very much in service and practicing Raj Yogis and both very diverse cultures and also being born though in, as an Indian body, but being reared in a very uh, Western situation. And the way they have spoken about sweetness was really amazing. So let's see what they had to say. So first one is was how to understand. So um, Sister Dipti said that there's always a likability <clears throat> linked to someone. I mean, we like the person and therefore we say they are sweet. And sweetness, actually, she said, is basically a flavor or a taste. Basically, it's, it's a very difficult value for that matter to speak about. But I think they have really come out beautifully with those five values, what Dadi Janki speaks about. Uh, I would just quickly say that in Hindi first, but we are covering that in the next slide uh, in English. So for those who understand Hindi, it's like <clears throat> Madhurta sweetness, Dhairya Tya Patience, Pavitrata Satyata, that is purity and truth. And when we have all these, these four, along with purity and intention, then we can develop sweetness. So that's what Dadi Janki used to always say. And both of them really alluded to Dadi Janki again and again in their conversations because they have taken so much of sustenance from her. So what I would like to say, I won't go through each and every line of the slide, but Meeting everyone for the first time that can help us having a clean slate for that person, despite having any bitter experience in the past. So that's what the sweetness, the flavor comes out when we do all these things, which they have mentioned. These are the five virtues which I was speaking about. I forgot one that is humility, namrata. So purity, as all of you have been <clears throat> discussing in detail, I remember purity in intention, as Sister Rehna was saying. And the pure connection of me, the soul energy with the supreme being, which is a divine ocean, the source. If I can delve on that, sweetness becomes natural. And that's my truth. Because when we say satyata, which is and sabhyata, like if I am truth, if I'm speaking truth and truthful, I, may, I need to make sure I'm also very sabhya, which means... I have to be very careful the way I speak because many people say truth is bitter. But really at Brahma Kumaris, we are taught that even if you are truthful, you need to make sure the way you are speaking is very important. And therefore, Dr. Gaurav Agarwal and many others were alluding to that slogan which we have here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> About uh, speak softly, speak humbly and speak in a low volume. So there you are, humility comes in there as well. Being patient, I think as a doctor, quite a few doctors in the audience, we have to be patient with our patients. That also is a quality which helps to develop sweetness. About all maturity, which we call Gambhirta in Hindi. So once someone has those above four values, then maturity becomes quite easy. 
and we can give the example of one of our first administrative heads of the Brahma Kumaris. We call her lovingly Mama. So she was the one who was really very mature in her dealings with everyone. So we'll move on further. This was all about intention has been covered in detail that what is the intention of mind and a pure soul really who has good intentions, you can exude that. You don't really need to speak. If your intention is good, the intent is good, your content doesn't matter. The intent and content come here. So that's what, and uh, coming to this aspect of humility, everyone was, particularly Sister Dipti and both, even Brother Ash was saying that if I'm, in my, if I'm situated in my true self-respect, the Swarman, then humility really follows. Again, two beautiful Hindi words. Swarman is self-respect and Nirman is being humble. And another, I must say, virus which comes in our system, the innate system of the soul is familiarity, which I can quickly cover that if I... Familiarity actually is a good quality in that way, but we need to understand the perspective, why we are saying that if I am very in a familiar situation with any person, I take that person for granted, I cross boundaries, then I really intrude in their space, in their comfort space, and that kills away my sweetness. So it's really important to maintain a safe distance from people. And also, it is in one way, uh, I mean, safety for me, because if I don't intrude in their space and they don't get upset with me for whatever reason, I am very safe. Otherwise, I will get entangled in this big game of what they are feel about me and what I feel about them, so on and so forth. And that leads to a big karmic account. So we just need to be very importantly not be so familiar with people. And it's important to be just be oneself. Again, when being oneself is the being aspect of the human being, I need to be in that innate nature of the soul conscious state which I am. If I am sweet, how will it show in my behavior? Acceptance. I will really accept people. I will be very content. Contentment is another value. My connection with the divine would be more and more strong. I would be more wise in my decisions. And another thing, again, they remembered Dadi Janki very uh, eloquently here was about giving sorrow. I, again, at Brahma Kumaris, we are taught this, that uh, once you're on the path of meditation, you don't really give sorrow to anyone but we tend to take sorrow from people and that affects my purity and that affects my sweetness so I think there we are so we need to really make sure we are away from this bad vice of sorrow particularly taking sorrow from others and writing again journaling comes up very often where people can write down their feelings their emotions how they are feeling and that helps you basically to check how you are doing on an internal level and how you can develop your sweetness more. I remember Brother Ash said this, that what would you, he was asking actually, Sister Dipti, that what would you like people to try to deepen their relationship with the self and thereby strengthen their self-respect? So she said that never be disheartened because that's what we are taught here again. In Hindi, it's a beautiful Urdu word actually, Dil Shikhast. Never give up on yourself. That's what even the Supreme Being tells us. Fine, you've done something wrong. Come out of it ASAP. Make sure you clean yourself, clean your inner crevices, whatever you're going through. And just forget that because we say Raat Gai, Baat Gai. Let's move on fast. And never feel sour with self because when I become sour with myself, my self-respect really goes very low. And that's what Sister Dipti said, the quote, that sweetness is born out of eternal energy, not the physical energy. And real sweetness is when you're sweet to all, not just some. And here it reminds me that if someone is being extra sweet with someone, it's basically some swar, it's some sort of uh, selfish desire or motive. Why am I being sweet to that one soul? Why can't we sweet to all of them at the same time? So we need to check again. It comes down to what is my intention behind. And we had a few questions. I'll see how much time I have. I have five minutes. So this was question that at my office, people take undue advantage of me due to my sweet nature. 
So how do I deal with that? So Sister Digby said that we confuse politeness with sweetness. And when I am in my self-respect, really people won't take me for granted. So I need to just check how am I, because I can't place the finger outside that he or she is like that. I have, because three fingers are towards me. So we have to really make sure that let me be in my self-respect and say a yes or no with a lot of utmost politeness. And obviously we should learn to say no. That's what we should do, particularly in the office setup. Even at personal home as well, when you are with people around, with relatives, people take you for granted. But draw your boundaries as well, but be in your self-respect. That was the answer. I am so bitter inside the next question. I'm not able to accept that I'm a sweet soul, as in the spiritual morning class we are said. So beautiful answer, Dipti Sister Gail, that you need to take medicine. And that medicine has to be taken for on and on and on. And you know the medicine may actually be bitter, but accept the medicine. So same way the Supreme Being gives us this medicine when he keeps telling us daily that you are a sweet soul, you are a sweet soul. It will start working. It will someday or the other melt your heart so much because that's the ultimate truth of the soul. And I have had so many layers on my soul that I have forgotten that I am indeed innately a sweet entity. So just get rid of the layers, which will happen the more and more we start begin to meditate. It's a beautiful journey. Someone said, I am not able to convince myself that I am an eternal being. I think let me just shut this. Just a These apologies, we are all in the Ganesh festival in the west part of India, where Sister Priyal and me are in Maharashtra state. It can be extremely noisy at this point of time in India. So I hope I'm not overshadowed by the noises outside. So yeah, if I'm not able to convince myself that I'm an eternal being, she again said that give some time and space to the self. As we spoke about familiarity with others, I think we need to be soft with ourselves. We need to give some time and also some space. It will take some time. It's not a one-day thing. I mean, the many people from 30, 40 years who are regular Rajyogi meditators, they also feel that being in the soul conscious state 24 7 is a very difficult job so we all are on the journey we must say work in progress but i must say work in progress all the time is not right because when will the, the work get completed so but i need to look at myself how i was yesterday and how i am today so it will happen it's not a difficult thing but keep trying and trying how can i maintain my self-respect constantly so that i can be sweet with everyone and here again, it comes that developing a relationship with the self and with the Supreme Being. And again, it takes some time. And as I keep doing this on my journey, cleanliness happens. I start really clearing off all the baggage and all the dirt which I have carried in my mind. And once that starts clearing, my self-respect starts shining more. And then automatically, my sweetness will radiate. I don't need to then think about being sweet with anyone. Right, so perfect dot on time. I'll just stop sharing the screen. And let me just tell you that uh, very patiently, Boston, yeah, Brother Dave is here. Thank you so much for joining. And before I pass it on to you, I have to introduce the audience to you, about you. So Brother Dave is joining us for the first time. And as all of you know, his name is Dave which is a deity, very sweet. And also, if I can tell you his surname, it's a difficult one, a tongue twister, Linga Devaru. There's another Dev in there. So ignore that difficult spelling, but he's double Dev. And uh, if I can speak about him, I know him personally during, I have, having met him in May. He's a Rajyogi for the last 30, 35 years now. And he came into Brahma Kumaris when he was just a very young student back in India, in Bangalore, where he was studying software engineer, software engineering. And he says that he's not only learned this art of meditation, but also makes it very easy for others to learn and experience. So I'm sure there are many new uh, people who have joined here and who feel a little bit tough in their experience. There you are, we have an experienced Rajyogi for us. 
and he teaches and facilitates workshops in many topics to name a few positive thinking, managing stress, so on and so forth. And right now, he is a software engineer working at one of the leading financial institutions in Boston. And uh, I mean, he's basically very Indian at heart, raised in Bangalore, Karnataka. And as always, we have a sweet poem to offer to all our guest speakers. <clears throat> so let me uh, just begin. So being instrumental for serving in Boston at the 7577 Common Street, I hope uh, this address is correct, whether they will correct me later if I'm wrong, <clears throat> at the Common Street, he's the chosen one of the divine because he's in these so sweet. Every now and then he posts meditation as his tweet. That's because it's the only way through which God we can meet. On this life journey, people may ill treat or mistreat, but let me with all of them have an inner smile to greet. Let weakness be my slave and under my mighty feet. And let me have good wishes for everyone, whoever I meet. Finally, on our spiritual journey, let all of us have an intense fleet and stay well seated firmly on the soul conscious seat. So with this, I welcome you, Brother Dave, once again. And the stage is all yours. Thank you. Om Shanti. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. That's very sweet of you to write a poem <laughs> and introduce. And Om Shanti to everyone. I'm joining you from Boston, Massachusetts, USA. The time here is 11 a.m. So for those of us who are on the Eastern time zone, West Coast, good morning. And those of you in the perhaps UK, Africa, good afternoon. And those in India, good evening. And happy Ganesh Chaturthi for those of you who are celebrating that today. We didn't hear any noise because Zoom has a very nice feature of noise cancellation. So you're good. So I was hearing pretty much everything from the beginning. I was actually quite inspired by the sharings that all of you did. And I was just wondering, well, is there anything more to share after having heard all of those things? So then I thought perhaps my duty is to actually kind of put things in a flow in the way I have experienced it in my own words. So what I would like to do, if it's okay, let's just take five minutes, kind of go into some sort of a reflection and contemplation so that we can prepare our mind to be all together and um, be on that same platform, what we, as we say, and experience uh, our togetherness for the next 45 minutes or so. So I invite you just to sit back, if you have pen, paper, just drop all of them. If you have devices in your hand, just put them away just for a few minutes. And let this body be totally relaxed and comfortable. Let the feet touch the floor. And your hands resting on the lap. Your back resting against the chair. And your shoulders dropping any tension from them. Let the body be completely relaxed so that it doesn't pull my mind's attention. And as this body sits quietly, slowly and gradually, I acknowledge the presence of everything around me. It could be the noise, people, things. 
just becoming aware of them and acknowledging their presence. And now, further withdrawing my attention from everything and going inward. Unplugging the flow of thoughts from my mind of the things connected to the outer world. And tapping into the resources in the inner world. On the screen of my mind, let me picture myself as that luminous being radiating many values and one such value is sweetness. Within me, the luminous being I am radiating the value of sweetness in a natural way. It is just like breathing in a natural way. The flow of blood in my body in a natural way. I, the luminous being, I am radiating the virtue, value of sweetness around me. And I also experience everyone around me physically or virtually radiating the similar value whether knowingly or unknowingly and I transcend in this gathering, radiating the virtue of sweetness. I am in this energy field beyond the physical plane. in the subtle reality where each one of us is radiating sweetness. And now gently becoming present here in the physical realm whilst maintaining the awareness of that inner luminous being. Om Shanti. So, it was shared earlier in one of the points that, in fact, the virtue of sweetness is not so easy to express. 
you know, there are some virtues or values we express just by being the way we are. Some we express through our words. Some we express by the way of our actions. And some just by our attitude. And there are some which are expressed in all of the above ways. Just yesterday, someone forwarded to me this a short video song of Sri Krishna because it was Krishna did master me for those of you who are familiar with this holiday two weeks ago. And that this song, this video said about Sri Krishna, how you know the song goes, just a, a line of it is in Sanskrit, the song is it says, Adharam Madhuram, Vadanam Madhuram, Nayanam Madhuram, meaning that, you know, his lips, his eyes, his face, his activity, everything is sweet. And I felt, oh, this is quite timely for me that I'm hearing this song because I can't remember hearing that before. I kind of vaguely remembered something of that kind, but I had not heard it. But yesterday I heard it and that kind of made me feel this very nice that and I have been reflecting on it actually, irrespective of this workshop today, that just even visualizing a personality, so there it is depicted, attributed to the deity, in that case it's Sri Krishna. But I just actually visualizing how wonderful it will be for everyone in our lives, whoever we interact with, if all of us actually radiate the sweetness in the way we speak, in the way we are, in the way we look, in the way we do, and that's what people will remember, right? Earlier I was hearing how one sister made the brother feel when she offered a cup of chai in the morning. So the sweet memories are left behind when we actually encounter a sweet action. So we all indeed have this virtue, whether we believe it or not, whether we, whether we actually express it or not. You know, um, um, we heard also uh, from Dr. Mehta, I think, about little children um, or somebody else, I can't remember now, how they actually are naturally sweet, right? One of the beautiful things where we find in the little children is their sweetness. I find that in the little children, majority, right? 90%, all of everybody admires children because that's one beautiful quality that stands out in them is the uh, virtue of sweetness. And kind of, we also find that to be more obvious, like the little children, little children, maybe not that much percentage, but also in the uh, very elderly people. You know, they're like almost like the two spectrum, two ends of the spectrum, right? Uh, you find them to be very sweet in natural way. So let's talk about the children, where children express, exhibit that sweetness in them. And that's what we all kind of feel the pull towards them. But if you think about it, why? What is so in them that the sweetness is so natural in them? And I believe that sweetness actually comes from this quality of purity. Purity is a very loaded word because there are so many aspects of purity, right? So, but in con connection with sweetness, the way I define purity is it's a state of mind where we don't harbor any ill feelings towards anyone or anything. So purity is a state of mind where we don't harbor, meaning we don't hold, we don't, um, you know, keep the accountability uh, 
you know, all of those things, we don't harbor any ill feelings, any ill feelings towards anyone. And that's the state of purity, which allows the sweetness to naturally flow in various aspects of our life. Now, little children have this nature. Fortunately, they have a very feeble memory, right? Like they're very much in the present. Yes, as they grow, of course, they develop that, you know, but at a very young age, like as a toddlers or young babies, that they, they, they don't harbor anything. They're just who they are. And that's one of the reasons why we find them to be very, very sweet because the inner wall, their mind is, you know, pure. There are no memories that are actually used to respond, to react with the outer world. So now we all are children at some point in our lives, right? So that means we all expressed it at some point in our life when we were young. And so what's wrong today that we lost it? It's the reality of life as well that some of us have it in a natural way as we grew also, but some of us have lost it because various situations in life, people have mistreated us, people have deceived us, they have been threatened. So in whatever way, and all of this does not have to be in a very big way. It could be in a very small setting also, how we kind of are made to feel insecure, made to feel um, you know, I need to do something else now, kind of leave my natural, in the, in the mode of survival, they lose this virtue of sweetness. Right? In the journey of our life, we are all subject to these things. And we try to survive, meaning survive here, meaning not necessarily physical threat, in, in, even then, even that, it's, it could be as simple as, you know, in a setting of few people in a raising of the family, you know, how the siblings are compared and, you know, how you react and respond to the situations you're in the mode of surviving, meaning protecting yourself, you, you might lose that innate nature of sweetness. So first thing is to deeply embrace, believe that sweetness is actually my innate nature. If the child can express, I can express it. Because at some point, I was that. And also to embrace that, yes, knowingly, unknowingly, various encounters that I have done in my life, tough ones or not so easy ones, all those things have led me to be what I am today. And so I have lost that inner beauty within me. You see, when we become aware, when we know, then we know what to do. If I don't know, then actually I don't know what to do. So knowing this helps us to regain back what we lost. And going back to this point about harboring the ill feelings, it's so easy for these kinds of impressions to be formed in our mind. You know, here in Boston, for example, the winter could be quite harsh. You know, especially in all the Northern Hemisphere countries, the winter could be very harsh. And here, I have been living here since last 23 years. And I have seen some really, really harsh winter times. And they say, you know, like, especially in January, February, that the it's so cold that if you walk, um, usually we all dress up, right? You wear the coat, you wear you know, all those things, but still there are some parts of the body like, like the hands, your fingers or your toes or even your nose, right? Where um, if they are exposed, if you are left exposed for a few minutes, sometimes it's like 10 minutes, then you develop frostbite. And frostbite means it's like you develop the numbness, you can't feel, and it damages the tissue and the skin and all those things. Very quick. Uh, it would be so cold that minus, with the wind chill factor, it would be like 
minus 20, minus 30, sometimes it could be minus 60, it could be like that. And in that, if you kind of quite dangerous it is. So the deformities or the damage to the tissues and the cells could happen rather very quickly. And even the, you know, the, the water could freezes rather quickly. Now, why I'm giving this example that our impressions, especially the negative ones, ill feelings, positive ones also, but if I have a tendency for the negative, then those more quickly, that they get formed rather quickly. So that's like the frostbite, you know, it damages my heart rather quickly. That any interaction with others that may not be a good one, a tough one, especially in close relationships, family, work, wherever. The ill feelings, the treatment that I receive from others that may not be so nice, we quickly form an opinion or kind of, you know, perceive them based on their reactions and that just sits in our mind. It's like I have formed an opinion and an ill feeling has been developed within me. Now, it, if I don't do anything, just like the frost fight, if I don't take care of it quickly, it could permanently damage my, my skin. So same thing here also, the ill feelings, if I don't take care of them quickly, then I could actually, you know, develop that, those sort of impressions. And if they repeat, the, they become on my sun scars, you know, my, my nature. That's kind of how I always look, look at other person or people and it will become my sun scar, my kind of nature. So it's important that I recognize and I'll be honest with you, we all have this nature of, so there, is, there is somebody who would be a villain in our lives. <laughs> right we can't say there is nobody i'm sure there is going to be someone and this is the honesty with ourselves right because there would be somebody that means if there is nobody okay we would be perfect and we would be at a different level okay so there is some aspects within me that are triggered and touched by somebody and we call them as a villain in fact they're not really villain you know they're another person they're another sweet being but because that sort of energy is being invoked from within me, we're calling them as a villain. So there will be somebody, there will be situations like this. So what do I have to do? The point here is that, all right, we know that we could have ill feelings and we may have ill feelings. And these ill feelings stop us from radiating our natural energy of sweetness. So in the Brahma Kumaris, we have a very beautiful, I mean, there are many beautiful things. And this is one of the beautiful things that I find, you know, many of you I heard, you know, like all the regular students, that we are students lifelong, right? Even the, you know, the eldest member of the family here in the Brahma Kumari, the chief of the Brahma Kumari, Dadiratha Mohini, who's reaching her hundred years soon, she's also a student and five-year-old kid who is a child of a BK parent who have come to Gyan recently, also says, you know, you know, Om Shanti, I'm a soul. That one is also a student. So all range of people with different ages, everybody is a student trying to learn something every day. And so one of the beautiful teachings that we are taught here is that every day, at the end of the day, take time to reflect on how your day went. What did you do? Did you hurt somebody or did someone hurt you? Did you give happiness to somebody or you give sorrow to somebody? Whatever those questions that I want to ask myself. But the study says that check yourself and change. So at the end of the day, what's important is that for me to see, am I actually affected today 
by any of the interactions that went through in my life today and I'm harboring any ill feelings towards anyone. And let's say if, if you do, something happened. And so best thing is to try to come to terms with it the same day and not carry it over to the next day. Yeah, because, you know, like, not sure how it is these days, definitely not here in the West, but before the, the milk used to be, you know, milk from the cow in the morning and we would bring it home. It would be boiled the same day and no refrigerators and we would use it. And at the end of the day, you have to empty the milk pot, wash it so that the fresh milk can be put the next day. If you don't wash it and you put the new milk in the same pot, the new milk will also be you know, split. It will be spoiled. It won't be uh, usable anymore. So likewise, our intellect, our memory bank, our mind actually is like this, like a pot. Right? So we had to clean it every night. And this process of cleaning is this, that I look at my day and clear any ill feelings that I may have developed or held to let it go. And it may not be easy. I acknowledge that it has happened to me many times. I kind of sleep with it. But what I have to tell myself is that I know I had to work on this, but I had to kind of, for my own benefit, I had to kind of let it go, forgive, and make a conscious effort to not get into such a feeling once more. So meaning to say you had to address it. Don't just let it remain in your heart because if you do that, then more and more ill feelings develop and you, you you will kind of form an opinion and impression and that virtue of beauty, sweetness within you will become dormant. You know, it's almost like clouded. These experiences cloud our mind so that light, inner light won't be radiating outside. So this one teaching that to clear your, at the end of the day, to clear, you know, any ill feelings that, kind of was formed during the day and to support this another thing that we learn here is that well there is some benefit in the things that happen to you so why not kind of embrace that yes things may not be happening in my favor things um you know men might not look as good in in the way i see them today but I don't know what the future holds. So there may be something in the future and that's why it is happening today or I don't know what the past was. So past and the future, I don't know. So there is something happening today to so having this feeling that, okay, there may be something, there, may, there is a reason why this is happening. And so leaving it to that uncertainty, meaning a good uncertainty is I don't know what it is, but we knowing that there is some benefit in it. And so the human mind is, if I see there is some benefit, some profit, something good for me, we are actually very easy and relaxed, <laughs> right? That's kind of how our mind actually works. If I find there is something good for me, then I'm actually quite um, easy and peaceful and not think too much about it. So let this feeling come out, like, no, there is some benefit in this. And, and I can trust that and um, not get caught up in what has happened. So I just wanted to say that about not harboring the ill feelings because that's one of the main reasons I feel that's an aspect of purity, I feel, which does not allow us to be our natural self, which is to be that sweet, like a little child. Now, I want to actually um, share, and like I said earlier, you know, patience, okay, for example, we know it's what to do. Um, you know, pace, we know, okay, love, okay, yes, kind of we understand. But the sweetness is kind of um, not 
as obvious many times. You know, I can't fake it actually, <laughs> right? Like earlier, somebody said about artificial sweeteners. We know how they taste. You know, it can't be jaggery. It won't taste like a jaggery or sugar cane or even honey. So talking about honey, I was looking up on the Google the other day about, um, you know, what they mean by sweetness. And, you know, in here in the West, probably in, in other places as well, we use this expression, you know, oh, you are sweeter than honey. Yeah, you may have heard this. Oh, he's, you are, she or he is sweeter than honey. So what they really mean is that just like honey is quite nourishing, and makes you feel, you know, gives a good sweet feeling. So in the same way, a person could be kind, pleasant, and could give that feeling of nourishment in the company, when you're in that person's company. So if you are sweet, it means that you are pleasant, you're kind, and that you're giving the feeling of, you know, sweetness like honey to other people around you. So I was thinking, okay, what are the different ways we could actually express sweetness? Like one is, yes, it's naturally within like a child and it comes out without even me doing anything. But knowing that kind of in the journey of life, it has subsided or we have, you know, it has become dormant. I need to do something to activate that. So I came up with six expressions of sweetness. There may be more based on today's discussion that I was hearing, uh, but I thought it sometimes is easier to remember uh, the number that is simple like six. So I came up with this six expressions of sweetness. And one of them, the first one is, you know, being thoughtful. A person who is sweet is very thoughtful. Like this sharing earlier today that the teacher thought about it. Oh, this person has come early today. He must be feeling tired or he must be cold. Let me offer him a cup of chai. That's thoughtful, meaning you took time to think about the well-being of the other person. In the fast-paced world today, how many of us actually take time to act, think about something good for others? It's very seldom, you know, like everybody's trying to go from meeting to meeting, catching, um, you know, the traffic, going, getting to the work or parents, especially taking the children from one activity to the other activity. It's like life is super busy. So taking time to actually express, show to others, again, in a natural way, you can't be faking anything. It has to become a natural part of you that being thoughtful. You know, for me recently, um, I celebrate my birthday in August and one of our senior yogis here also celebrates her birthday in August. So every year it has been my tradition to actually go and spend some time and celebrate my birthday with in the presence of her and other yogis company. And this year it so happened that, you know, she was not in the country here. She had to travel to other place for, um, you know, seva service. So I knew it would happen. It won't happen this year. And like I like, okay, it's part of life. It's good. There is nothing. There is no problem. But then one day I got a call saying that, oh, you know, like uh, this is Rocky Day on the thirtieth of you know August. Uh, would you like to come and be part of us for the Rocky program? And also you can celebrate your birthday like you normally do. You see, I had no expectation. Right, I, did, I had already said, okay, this year it's not possible because they're traveling. But they thought it through and, you know, and they called me. I felt that to be, yeah, what would you say? Was it loving? Is it caring? 
No, I felt that to be very sweet. It's a, somebody is thinking or thoughtful to make you feel special. In this day and age, yes, we are learning spirituality and so we are able to express these things. But in a world where, you know, things have become so unnatural, you know, like we have to say thank you for everything here. Now, whether even if you feel it or not, if somebody asks you, how are you doing? I have to say, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> whether I'm feeling good or not inside, that's a different story. You know, like it has become so robotic or autopilot mode. We just kind of have learned the words to say that are good, but I may not be actually feeling that inside. But it is so important that I take time to be thoughtful of somebody making a difference for them. And that's how you can actually express sweetness. So think about in your own life, in your family, it could be, it could be in your work that you thought about someone. Again, it has to be genuine. It can't be, you know, we all know that it can't be out of any expectation that I'm thinking about them so that I want to share something with them, make them feel different. So that's being thoughtful, expression of sweetness. Second one is, now this is interesting, it is spontaneity or being spontaneous, right? This is something that you find you know, in the little children, how they actually, if you give them a toy, like they, they're so spontaneous, how they behave with the toy, right? And it's very cute to actually observe that. So as adults, spontaneity is for us, it's almost like being adoptable. Like you're able to uh, go with the flow of life as it comes, right? Not stuck with the things like you can't say, oh, well, I planned the whole day. I structured my day. This was my plan. But now you're asking me to do this. Come on, I can't do it. So that's not being spontaneous. That's being, you know, so programmed. Sometimes it just had to be kind of going the flow of life. And that's where you are, you are allowing something that you didn't plan to emerge. And you have the probability of your innate nature of that inner beauty, that inner sweetness emerging. And we see this, right? Like you, you will discover this in yourself. Oh, you know, I thought I couldn't do it. I did it. And others, you know, like just imagine, right? Like, you, you're in a gathering and somebody asks you to sing a song. You never sang a song. Instantly, you'll feel shy. But when you sing something, whatever, how others feel? They're like, oh, that's so sweet. You're able to sing a song. <laughs> Isn't it? Like you must have experienced this. So that spontaneity is very good. And it's another way for us to, you know, share that, that inner beauty, that sweetness that, that we carry within ourselves. So be open uh, to situations that come where you didn't expect them to be, but it is actually encourage, encouraging you to be spontaneous and um, something beautiful emerge from within and that's with the virtue of sweetness. And the third is, it was mentioned earlier, that is, innocence right being innocence innocent and or innocence and again beautiful thing a lot of us have this very very beautiful quality of innocence but i must say that all the technology infamy and the information and all the things that is available today is actually robbing away our innocence. So much of information, and we are hooked into that. I want to know. I want to know what happened. Why this? Why that? And you something you didn't know, and you get you want to know that, or like it's really becoming so bad that everything is driven by it. Yes, I mean I'm in the information technology. Okay, don't get me wrong. I mean I have to study so much, and my work is like that. But there is something that we had to, where we had to draw the line. Look, this is enough. 
you know, more I consume, more I hold the things inside, more I, I learn the things that I don't need to know, lesser I'm becoming innocent. And that in turn impacting my sweetness. Innocence naturally radiates sweetness. You must have experienced in your, with your parents, for example, right? They're innocent on something that you, you do and you find them to be so sweet. Like, you know, oh, they don't know I know something, <laughs> right? Like, they're like, if you give them, if they're not so uh, gadget oriented of the gadgets today, like, you know, you should look at their behavior, how they behave with all the things that you, you for you, it's so easy. So their innocence comes out as so, you know, a natural expression of sweetness. So we do have this quality and, you know, our um, attractions to this information and the things in the social media can actually rob our innocence. So I would urge to be cautious on this and really be disciplined because we have to live with it, I understand, because we have to use it for our, you know, communications, we have to use it in our service projects, we have to use it in our job perhaps, or social networking, but um, everybody has a way where they can actually draw the line saying, no, this is good, this is it, not more than this, so that you protect yourself. Okay, so then the fourth one is, which is the most obvious one that most of us feel, is through our words, the way we speak. Yeah, the words create the world. How my words should be. Should be, we say, soft, sweet, gentle, meaningful. Right? The words should be meaningful. So, something to think about actually, why certain times I say things that I didn't mean to say. Or why certain times I speak in a way that is so bitter, <laughs> right? I'm sure most of us have come across these feelings that I would have said something like, really, why was I so mean? Or why is she or he so mean? So opposite of sweetness is being mean, being bitter. Meaning I'm really coming from this place of selfishness, and again, it, it, it connects back to my, what I'm holding inside. What's inside is what's coming out through my words. Words is really the last step of my communication. There is so much more that's happening behind the scenes. So if I make a conscious choice, you know what? It doesn't matter what's inside me, but I want to at least speak in a way that is pleasant for others. Yes, the respect is part of that. But being pleasant is something different. Meaning, others want to hear you. They don't want to block their ears. Your pleasant way of speaking makes them open up and they want to hear you. Have you heard sometimes you want to try to prove your point? They're not going to hear you because I'm trying to prove my point. By being pleasant, your out of respect, out of sweetness, that words are coming, they're more open to hearing you. So paying attention to how I speak. Yeah. Being pleasant, kind, meaning the words are kind, full of kindness, being kind, and yes, of course, respect is part of that. Um, but my words are giving them this feeling of, you know, having the honey or eating the toli, um, you know, consuming that is making them feel good inside. So those are the words we want to actually be speaking. And we all can do this. You know, it's not, you know, sometimes we say, no, we say in a, 
being conscious of the gender, we say sometimes like, okay, uh, a woman would speak kind of with mellow, sweet, sad, quiet voice, and a man would speak in a loud voice. No, that's just, we have, you know, kind of made it like that, but actually everyone, man, woman, each one being a spiritual being can actually, you know, be that gentle and sweet in which you give the others experience through your words. And the fifth one is, and this is something very special in the Brahma Kumaris, is through our drishti. Through our drishti, which is through our eyes, through our vision, how we look at others. Isn't it? I don't know about you, but for me, one of the things I really enjoy when I meet the yogis, when I meet other people who are spiritually inclined is looking at their eyes. These eyes have so much in them, such beauty, such sweetness in them. Because again, it's coming from that place of purity. Right? So, if and 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 the, these eyes are actually driven by our attitude, right? In in Hindi we say vritti and drishti. So my vritti is influencing my drishti. How I look. If I'm looking at the other person with a critical vision of hey, you have done this mistake, or like oh, you said this to me the other day. Or even my own self, oh, I did this mistake the other day. Any of these things. If my drishti holds that attitude of something of the past, I can't be giving that feeling to other people. So try this, right? Look at the people, look at their eyes, and let your eyes radiate this feeling of safety for them. Let your eyes not be of judgmental. And whenever I'm judging somebody, it's very clear in my eyes, the way I look at others. They may not be able to put into words, but you know they won't feel that sweetness from you. So if I'm conscious, this is one of the channels, the eyes through which I radiate my sweetness then I can look others with that beautiful, sweet drishti. And, you know, our senior sisters and brothers are, you know, through their drishti, make us all feel this. Why? I don't think they were always like that. I'm sure they have gone through the journey to become that. So they practiced, they developed, and they're giving that experience to us. We can do the same thing in turn. Yeah, so paying attention to our eyes. And lastly, through our smile. Right, we say it's a sweet smile. <laughs> that this smile, you know, sometimes we forget to smile, and I do that. People had to tell me this many times. Oh, why are you so serious? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm very serious. I had to really remember to smile. So this smile gives that feeling of, again, as I said, the sweetness virtue is not like, you can't fake it. And it's not just, okay, let me be sweet. Now you can't. It has to come through these different ways, expressions. And smile is one of them. And so if I am, you know, in that pure state of consciousness where my mind is in that reality of my true self, then, you know, naturally I'll be smiling. Naturally, there is that smiling, not like laughing. I mean, like it's like you have this on your face that others feel that, you know, sense of lightness and um, cheerfulness from you. And that is come. That's what gives them a feeling of sweetness through your smile, like a sweet smile. 
I want to also just say that the you know the founder of the Brahma Kumari is Brahma Baba. It was also shared earlier that how even though he knew that not all of us actually have become that sweet, but he addressed everyone as being sweet. Why? Because that's the way he was invoking that sweetness within us. And so his connection to God, whom we understand is like an ocean of sweetness. We all can connect to that source. You see, irrespective of any spiritual path, any religion, anywhere, right? People actually have, yes, you know, especially in the West here of late, you know, for all the wrongdoings that people have done, there is kind of people shy away from the expression of God, right? But internally, if you kind of remove all of those things, internally, everybody feels, you know, fond memories or sweet memories, knowingly, unknowingly, they may not even have a conscious memory, but there is something intuitive inside that gives you a feeling of comfort when remembering God. Why? Because that one always only sees goodness within us. That's why we feel comfortable in remembering or reaching out or connecting to that one. So if you and me being God's children, you and me being, you know, coming from the same source, if we can create the same energy, then others also would have those sweet feelings for us. So the work is on my side, how to develop that sweetness and quality. And it's not an overnight job. We also had to acknowledge this. This is something that I had to kind of work on myself on a regular basis so that, you know, it becomes part of me, right? It's like, you know, going to the gym and trying to build my muscles slowly, slowly. The developing the virtues also is like that, developing the virtues slowly, slowly. So, these are the six ways. I know I have kind of shared um, whatever you have actually shared before, but in my own words. But um, I'm, I must say that when I knew I, I had to um, share on this particular topic, I thought, okay, let me consciously practice this before I say, because I can't be speaking if I don't practice myself. And so I'll be honest with you, it was not easy in some um, in some some situations, especially where you know you're interacting with the people who are not sweet with you, let alone being sweet, who are not respectful, who are bombarding with things, demanding all those things. So I felt and I had consciously made this choice, no matter what, I'm going to be sweet. <laughs> okay. So I felt at the time that. Um, before being sweet, I also had to be patient because I had to let all that energy come through and then I can respond sweetly. You know, and all that energy that I should not be holding inside because if I'm holding inside, then it won't be natural sweetness. It will be really faking it. So that's why I'm saying it's a work in progress, meaning we had to make effort on it um, so, but we can do it. It really, really makes you feel so good if you maintain your sweetness and share that irrespective of what other people are like. So with that, I want to stop and I hope um, it made some sense, whatever was shared and um, if there are anything that you want to share or add, please do so.
So, Ashwin, right. thank you so much. I don't know, is it me echoing or is someone else? Right. Okay, so uh, I just want to let you know that there is something in the land of Boston, Massachusetts, because fortnight ago, when Sister Rita was speaking on the virtue of or value of lightness, she just gave me a shock a few hours ago saying, I can't do lightness, Manoj. I said, why? What happened? So she said, no, I'm not able to experience lightness. There is something has come up. And then you also have shared the same experience that, yeah, so see, I mean, that's what I like. Uh, you're very uh, genuine and honest about your feelings and Though someone is speaking about that value, it doesn't mean 24-7 we are exuding that, but we are again all work in progress. So very wonderful six simple takeaway messages which you gave us, and I'm sure everyone has enjoyed that. A lot of meaning in that, very small, small things. So I would now request our seniors, Dr. Ashok Mehta and uh, Sister Claudia, both to propose the vote of thanks to both of you. Thank you, Dear Bhai. <clears throat> Uh, the sweetness is actually emanating from you. Every word that you have spoken, it had uh, a genuine feeling of sweetness. I, I from long distance, I can feel it. I, I think it's a beautiful talk. And I like the, you took to something called a frostbite and a negative feeling. I think that's, you brought medicine in. I was wondering whether you had a medical uh, background to talk about a frostbite. The, you know, uh, when you talked about frostbite, it took me back to my early days as a surgical trainee. That was the time, 60s, we had a war with China. I mean, China had invaded India, and our soldiers suffered severe frostbites because we, didn't, we were not prepared to fight at the heights where the temperatures were very low, less. 20, 30, or minus 40, minus 60. And uh, I think frostbite and negative feelings may be identical. Thank you very much for bringing in that, that very unique comparison between the physical and the sweetness. Thank you once again for a beautiful talk that you gave. Um, Thank I you, bye. My first visit to Boston, that him, Sister Sharona was in charge of the Boston Center way back in 92 or so. And now, of course, he's in, uh, Sister Sharona is now in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv. So thank you very much. I really enjoyed. And the Boston, of course, is uh, famous for the, uh, uh, for the, teachings of mind-body medicine. Right. Her person, who was the pioneer of mind-body medicine, again, he also talked about the uh, Tibetan monks, uh, Buddhist monks, going right on the top, 15,000 square feet, uh, and 15,000 feet high, and dropping all the clothes, and sitting for almost hours in meditation without a frostbite. And he said, you can't stand that kind of a temperature even for 20 seconds and therefore the importance of meditation bringing up the temperature i think that was unique so you are in um, well you are in boston the, we had a delegation and uh, we were received by the indian uh, medical diaspora in boston and i felt that boston cambridge especially that area was like varanasi in America. It's the Varanasi of India. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Please come back to Boston once again. Yeah, beautiful. So, thank you. It was fun listening to you. Om Shanti, Brother Lev, it was so nice to hear from you. Like, I like when Dr. Ashut Mehta talked about the frostbite. I was also like, because you know, uh, by feeling, you know the <laughs> experience. And that's right, when the ill feeling comes to the soul, it becomes like a frostbite. It fin finishes the feelings between two souls. And um, also, I quite like it when you are talking about the the sweetness, what it means. Especially, I like the point when you say that we have to be innocent, because that's what I'm trying to 
reach myself on that point because when you are innocent you are like a child whatever they tell you you're just innocent you don't get your mind too much involved whatever they do so i quite like when you went through all the points be thoughtful be innocent your dristy so it was very meaningful and thank you very much for sharing all your knowledge with us. Thank you for being with Thanks, us. Thank you, Claudio, for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you, both of you. And before we go on to the closing meditation, I'll just share the screen to do the announcements. Okay, so as all of you know that we are approaching the last Sunday of the month. So let's try to enhance and enrich this experience of sweetness by going to the silence retreat. Oh, that's wonderful. I just realized that it's more of a live image now. So within 12 hours from now, we'll be having this silence retreat. So it will be late evening for the West Coast and morning for uh, India. Please join us. And these are all uh, events. Uh, these silence retreats are based on the teachings of the Brahma Kumaris, which have been given through the medium, we say, of Dadi Gulzar. So we have really an ex excellent experience of silence. And let's try to immerse more into the sweetness of this silence. So that's 12 hours from now. And yes, we are approaching our platinum episode. So a big congrats to all of you, all the, even the participants, interpreters, each one of including me that we have come up to this, it's three years we are completing now, and we have our two beautiful coordinators, National Coordinator of Canada, Brother Eric, and the Regional Coordinator of Latin America, Brother Ken, both very senior Rajogi, sharing their experience on this beautiful value of harmony, the next Saturday. And again, to join us with us for the workshop, we the first time we are having two speakers in the workshop, so it's Sister Moira from Argentina, the South, America and Sister Anjani from the East Coast, New York. That will be the following Saturday after that. And this is our elegant calendar, I must say, of September. And that's October. October is a very auspicious occasion for the Values for Life series because we began our series in October 2020, the height of COVID pandemic which was going on. And this series was started that time. So we have a few birthdays which we'll be celebrating of the series and the workshops as well. So take a deep breath. We'll be announcing that later, not so soon. And these are our websites and the emails. Please feel free to uh, share your feedback on this. And we'll be sending you all the review materials. Uh, thank you for the ones who have shared the new participants. We have taken down your addresses, the email addresses and numbers as well, if you're given. And all this information, the workshops and the episodes are available on these following links. If you can click on them or even on the Vihasa India YouTube channel, everything is available online. So with this, I'll just stop sharing the screen and we now move on to uh, the meditation, the closing meditation, brother. Over to you. Thank you. Om Shanti. So let's take few moments to comprehend all that we have heard. Letting the intellect process taking time to allow the experience to be formed inside. As I sit in silence, I visualize myself as this soul, inner being, being of light, and this light is so pure within. my natural nature of purity within 
ease. Filled with good feelings. No impurities. It is full of sweetness. And I visualize that inner beauty filled with sweetness is radiating to all aspects of my life. It touches the hearts of the people around me. through me being thoughtful. Through my spontaneity. Through my innocence. With my sweet words. with my gentle drishti. and sweet smile. It is as though the subtle rays of light filled with sweetness are reaching people around me in my relationships. And I let this be my natural nature. And along with this, I remind myself my source, my spiritual parent is that mountain of sweetness. The one who sees me and says to me, Sweet child, sweet soul. With that feeling of that sweetness from him, I too radiate sweetness. Om Shanti. So, thank you so much, Brother Dev, once again. And it's a sweet request from the participants that if we can have a quick photograph. So over to you, Sister Anu. Yes. It is a beautiful feeling. Thank you so much. And yes, everybody looks forward to the photograph. Uh, I know Brother Rajesh sends, but sometimes some are missing in there. So we'll request you to switch on your video so that we can all have this beautiful photograph in this moment, memorable with Brother Dave. So everyone, two seconds more, people are still opening. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Right, so thank you so much once again. Thank you so much. Have a sweet day, sweet month, <laughs> sweet year ahead. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Very sweet. Very nice. It was really nice. Thank you.